Oh, nice. Hey, everyone. This is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. It's been over seven years since Tim Hamilton, the ballistic machinist, began sending us uh, kind of oddball exotic 12-gauge ammo. In fact, it's safe to say he was the first contributor to what we call now the You Make It, We Mock It series. Many of his early designs were just for fun, and some failed. Some worked pretty well, but just had no practical application. Eventually, Tim came up with some 12-gauge designs that were so good and innovative that he began to sell them. Now, if we fast forward to today, Tim is now designing 9mm exotic ammunition. I introduce to you the Interceptor. And when you have a cool design like this, you got to have a cool name for it too, so people will remember it. The Interceptor is a solid copper precision machine projectile designed for self-defense. Now at first glance, a lot of people were going to think that the Interceptor round is just a copy of the G2 Research RIP round. But as we show you the, our tests of the new Interceptor round, I think you'll agree that it functions quite differently and at a price of nearly $10 less than a box of RIP rounds. Now Tim could not find anyone to manufacture the bullets for him, but he didn't give up. He ended up making a huge investment in buying his own equipment, such as this Swiss lathe. With this impressive machine, he can turn out one bullet every 40 seconds. But it's automated and this machine can run 24 hours a day unsupervised. It also has the capacity to make 12 gauge slugs. And he told me he also has plans to make 40 caliber, 10 millimeter and 45 ACP. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Now you know Tim's story, where he started out as just a contributor to our channel to where he is today, a man with a plan to make fantastic ammo. Let's get out and test these things out and see what they do. Welcome back to Fighter folks. Jeff behind the camera, Officer Greg out here. You guys remember Tim Hamilton from the Ballistic Machinist channel. Uh, Tim not only builds some badass shotgun ammo, but he also has been building some nine millimeter ammo here, handgun ammo. And this is stuff called the 9mm Interceptor. Now, I will tell you that anytime, where's one of our rounds? Anytime one of these rounds is designed that deviates from standard hollow point rounds, I'm a little skeptical. They usually tend to be kind of a gimmick. Tim builds some pretty good stuff with a lot of engineering behind it. So um, I'm holding out a lot of hope that these things can actually expand and do well. They uh, just already shown you on the tabletop, but they have a nice big deep cavity. They're only 90 grains, so they're a very light bullet. Other 90 grain, very light bullets like the Liberty Defense, those little aluminum ashtrays, they're absolutely worthless for self-defense. You've all seen the RIP round that breaks off into a million little petals, worthless for self-defense. Um, we're gonna kind of test and see if these things would be viable. But a 90 grain, very lightweight projectile, Tim tested them through a 4.6 inch barrel. Today we have a Kenek TP9SF Mete with a five inch barrel. That, uh, if my math is correct, that's a little bit longer than his test gun. So we're gonna try him through a pistol and then we're gonna try him through Jeff's M1A9 carbine or carbine. And if you're a see, British air softer. If you're a British air softer. And uh, we're gonna see what it'll do with an 18, you said this is 18 or 16? Uh, 18 or 18 and a half, uh, okay. one of the two. What's an extra half an inch? Right. right. So we're gonna give him a try and see, a Jeff, or, um, Tim claims 1335 feet per second. Now for a nine millimeter bullet, that's a pretty bold claim. And anytime you buy ammunition, they test it through a five inch barrel because they wanna get the maximum kick out of that thing. Tim's actually tested his out of a 4.6 inch barrel. Um, 1335 from a nine millimeter, it's a pretty bold claim. That's almost 10 millimeter speeds. So uh, let's give it a try in a bunch of different tests downrange and see what we got. I'm excited. I am too. You can't tell. <laughs> Jeff, that's a uh, Oakland-style chrono uh, chronograph. Oh, okay. Shoot sideways. So I'm going to actually shoot sideways. Gotcha. Through there. When you're ready. I'm ready. 12, 22. Wow, and the crony worked. Yeah. Sideways, gangsta style. Very nice. Okay, uh, now with the interceptor, interceptor, right? When you're ready. ready? I'm ready. 
1409. Jesus, that's faster than. That's like super plus B. We'll try a plus, couple plus. more to make sure that wasn't an, an, an anomaly. Okay. 1426. 1403. Well, I think the fresh. chronograph works better on that side. Yeah, and this is a longer barrel than factory, but still 1400 feet per second out of a 9 millimeter. Yep. That's fast. So we're shooting an M1 carbine, sort of. Is this an M19, you said? Yeah, made, it's made a Chiapa or Chiapa or Chiapa. It's Chiap a uh, Chipo. Yeah, it's a replica of an M1 carbine from uh, World War II from Saving Private Ryan's. <laughs> and we are shooting right now military ball ammo out of it. Okay. Nine millimeter. Nine millimeter. Nine Mike Mike. Mike it's easy. <laughs> sure. Yeah, if you're if you're cool. If I want to sound like a sweet guy, and I also can't say I'm shooting it. I have to be running. I'm, oh, okay. I'm running nine millimeter, out, nine Mike Mike out of it, and I have to have a stern. <laughs> I should have more tattoos and a beard though too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, downrange, Jeff. We have an Australian chronograph. Yeah. This so, is the new. It works better this way, actually. Yeah, actually, we need to activate it though. Do you to work properly. Oh, okay, there you go. It has to be rocking. <laughs> All right, before it stops working Okay, properly. let's see if it works. All right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Safety off. 1375, 13. or S-L-E-I. <laughs> okay, now with the interceptor. Interceptor, here we go. 1443, Australian. Not bad. Wow. Do another one. 1453. 1492. Or 26HL. You never know. <laughs> I tell you, the chronograph works better upside down. Who would have thought? Six high on it. Yeah. Actually, it did. <laughs> no errors. Who knew that the chronograph would work on its side and upside down? Okay, I guess I'm ready. Here we go. It was kind of an overcast day when we filmed this, so we set up a bunch of flashlights to try to illuminate the gel block a little bit better. This was so I could run the Kronos high-speed camera as fast as I could. We didn't realize that the big flashlight was flashing on and off like that. You couldn't see that in real time. But the results were quite brutal. The slug ended up traveling about eight inches into the block. And the expansion of that bullet is just beautiful. FBI standards are eight to 13 is ideal. One thing that FBI doesn't get out of most of their ballistics testing, you gotta see the pedals on that thing. That's yeah. unbelievable. It very consistent expansion. Every one of those pedals opened up perfectly, but didn't over open. Yeah. You can actually have pedals over open and they just fold back on themselves and kind of counter the that's damage. A, that's like a uh, ninja star <laughs> stuck in your body, you know? Here we go. <laughs> Bounce those. The flashlight idea was from our viewers. They suggested that a while back. I thought we'd give it a try and it kind of worked out pretty well. Using the 19 inch barrel, we got only about one inch deeper penetration. It stopped about nine inches. But remember, we only averaged about 44 feet per second faster out of that 19 inch barrel. If you're not familiar with the reason we did that, longer barrel, more burn time behind the bullet, it's gonna fly a little bit faster. So we were able to drive it about an extra inch. Pedal stayed intact though, that's pretty dang cool. I'm gonna rotate this so you guys can okay. see, see oh, the Oh, that's actual... better, that's better. Look at those things, whoa. Did not break, no. perfect expansion. It, these might have folded back a little bit more. But the fact that they stayed intact though is what's impressive. Well, a lot of times what I see on these kind of rounds is when you drive them too hot, because I shoot a lot of 10 millimeter, the pedals of these gimmicky rounds tend to break off. Because- Are you saying these are gimmicky? No, I'm saying- Oh, okay. <laughs> Of the rounds that try, like the RIP and all those kind of special yeah, yeah. things. Anytime you deviate from standard uh, bullet design, anytime you get these pedals flying back like this, you almost never see them stop at this open position, which is where you want them. Because it, look at this wound cavity over here. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's a permanent wound cavity too. Yep. And that's got to be. I mean, it opens up within the first uh, yeah. one inch or something. 
I'd say this is a, extremely rough here, but we're about an inch and a quarter of permanent wound cavity. That's pretty damn good. Wow. But to retain its petals like that and not have those things shear off. It's, yeah, it's that's, good. that's precision stuff right there. Any kind of a hollow point, this one included, hits, expands open like a parachute and dumps all of its energy in the target. Let's say bad guy. Yeah. That's what you want. We don't want these rounds to fly through the block and out the back and hit innocent people. We want them to do more damage. This is the damage. And they do that by it's flaring open and slowing down to a complete stop. If they zip all the way through, makes a nice little hole in someone, makes two holes in someone, but uh, not a lot of energy dump in there and they're not very good for stopping. That's what soldiers overseas are finding out because they are relegated to uh, nine millimeter ball ammunition. Or also known as full metal jacket. Full metal jacket, so. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Full metal jacket. The 16 inches of ballistic gel hardly slowed down the full metal jacket round at all. In fact, it had enough energy after leaving the block that it would still be lethal. So our hardball round went all the way through. You, saw, you probably saw it before I did. Zipped all the way through and exited out the back. This is a 16 inch gel block. So <coughs> by FBI standards, that's over penetration and therefore dangerous to anybody behind your bad guy. So we don't want to use hardball ammunition for defense situations or even hunting if we can help it. So you can see why something like this is a pretty cool design. Excellent work, Tim. It's it's very nice work. That was a five inch barrel. We don't even need to go to the carbine because right. we'd punch that hardball round deep through even faster. This is what the recovered bullets look like. A uh, beautiful expansion, razor sharp edges, they're nasty. And if you're curious how much they opened up, it's one and a sixteenth inch or 27 millimeters. These things expanded three times their original diameter. That's nuts. Now this is quite different to how the G2 Research RIP bullet functions, where the pedals or trocars all break off. Now many experts say that the fragmentation occurs too shallow in the gel, it under penetrates to reach vital organs, while the base of the bullet actually over penetrates and becomes a liability. Jeff, you have four layers of denim here. Uh, four layers of denim is part of the FBI protocol when they're testing, when they're gel testing things. Denim or any kind of cloth tends to clog up standard hollow points. We're gonna see if these rounds that in the interceptor will make it through four layers of denim and into the this ugly, ugly bear. And expand. So we'll have to put up expand. some Kevlar or something behind there. Go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Well, we, yeah, we had four layers of denim. We'll fold it over like that. Um, simulate you wearing a, uh, what is it, a Tennessee tuxedo? <laughs> a denim shirt with a denim jacket and a mullet. <laughs> um, went through into his belly. Jeff found it over here stuck in the in the uh, thing, but check this out. This is, again, very, very odd. Here's all your little pieces of, look, there's four layers of denim plugged it's in so there. It's so deep, it just ate, uh, ate up all the denim. Yeah, it, four layers of denim plugged in there. But for that thing to still expand like that, boom. Here we go on the blue dot. Wow. Okay, well. So it actually burrowed in deeper than I thought. Looks like it kind of opened up. Yeah, it started to, it wanted to. Here's the interesting part on the back. You can see where it turned into a shotgun slug. <laughs> yeah. Who knew that that was all packed in there? Wow. But yeah, nothing else came through there. Keep in mind that's 90 grain projectile, like a super light. Yeah. It's like practically a piece of cardboard. Yeah. But uh, to, to dig in that deep. In a, in a, a normal, Round nose, it was like 124, 125? 115 grain, 124, 147. So oh, okay. the lightest target loads that you normally shoot at an indoor range or out on out practicing is 115 grains. This was quite a bit lighter than that, 25 grains lighter. Wow. Here we go. Whoa.
big muddy mess here. That's all right. Good thing is, okay. Jeff, that this used to be dried cow poop, and now it's wet cow poop again. So yeah, yeah. At least we, at least we it's, achieved it's that. It's properly aged, though. Okay, so what happened? Jug number one. Wait, wait. Look at the exit. Is there an exit? There is. Okay. See, see? how it's kind of an X shaped? Yeah. I wonder why. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, and look here. Oh, there it is. Perfectly clean. You, you, you were supposed to wait oh. for the I, big reveal for I that. I just found it, so I shocked myself. Oh, okay. So, so. Uh, zipped into jug number two, obviously. Duh. Um, I don't see that it even exited number two. Number three remains untouched, and we think number four just got scared and uh, suicided off the edge. Yeah, because it, he, it, it burst open on the just from falling. Yeah, he gave up. Here we go. That's right. When you got gummy bears, so it hit him in the belly. Um, yeah, I don't know if light, if you can catch that in the light. Oh, yeah, actually made a little like a churro. Yeah, it is. It's churro. Churro. It shape. immediately opened again. Immediate opening. Ma made it through number one, number two, and Jeff and I were right. Well, we did, okay, people are gonna be bothered if we don't show oh, what the Lord. wound looks like on. There's the X. You can see the little X pattern now too. Look. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, there it is, in number three. And here's a bigger X pattern where those petals went through. Turn away, kids. This might get graphic. Actually, we don't even need. Yeah, you can just fancy, tear it open. Fancy, fancy knife. We can just tell Fleeter surgery this thing open with my dainty fingers. Look at that. Perfect, perfect expansion. Yep. Again, I, I remain shocked. I was just telling Jeff off camera that usually these gimmicky rounds, anything that's not a... Not, not a are you saying these are gimmicky? These are not gimmicky. I was okay. going to get to that. I was going to put a little, a little audio asterisk thing next to that. Um, anything that is designed differently than a normal hollow point usually fails in some way or shape or form. This thing has had great penetration and awesome expansion. Hopefully it'll go through the clay, expand, and then we can capture it in our Hong Kong body armor. <laughs> All right, I think it's gonna make it through the clay. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go between the eyes. Whoa. Ha. Wow. Whoa. So, we've seen some pretty expansive uh, clay damage before. This is crazy. If you want to look down in that hole, you've heard of canoeing a guy's head? This is more like <laughs> flower potting a guy's head. Look at this thing. Jeff suggested we put this in a kiln and make it into a flower pot. <laughs> oh, you ruined it. And Never mind. Look, look back here. This is all I could find, but we've got two little shards. The rest of it might be in there. No? I don't think that's it down there. I think it's from an earlier hit. Wait, I there? found these two pieces up here. Okay. So I'm thinking, because of this thicker medium here, that it actually did break apart this time. Okay. But not a fair test. That's not anywhere close to, like, uh, you know, meat tissue. It's way more dense. So. Okay. The fact that it destroyed around is not... Exp not. Uh, but it still looks cool in oh, slow motion and, and everything. You everybody know? likes clay block. I do, too. I, I need to use it more. People, like... Always say, why don't you use it more? And now, the OG finger wiggle. <laughs> you make a sleeve out of that. <laughs> it's the new Apple Watch. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, nice. oh. That was an explosion. Oh. Yikes. Yikes. Got about five and a half inches of wet magazines here. It's just like the lead plate. Look at that. <laughs> Except not lead and not a plate. <laughs> so Jeff has soaked down these magazines. You don't want to ask where those magazines have been. We're going to see how, how deep we can get one. In fact, I'm going to fire up here towards the top, so hopefully we can see how far uh, it expands. One of you took like three shots, bam, bam, bam. That seems like a lot. Uh, well, 
That's almost as three, quickly as you can and still stay on target. It's almost 300% of my original plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then we'll do three shots right here: rifle or uh, pistol. Let's try the the carbine rifle. Bueno. Okay. Let's <laughs> three shots, right? Three shots. When you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, nice. Very okay, nice. Okay, well, so three good. rounds into the lead magazines. I'm kind of surprised actually because I predicted they would stop up here and they're 90 grain projectiles. They're not very heavy. Yeah. I thought they were going to stop up front. We clear back here have still have three bullet holes. In that so they all went through. Well, so far, I don't think they all made it through. In fact, this is almost like scientific proof here, Jeff. Oh, there, there you go. There's one. Yeah, I don't think that one, it looks like one made it through, but let's see if we can find the other. It might have been a thin spot, you know? A thinner part of the magazine with just the pictures, maybe? <laughs> maybe less information conveyed right it's there? It's a little, it's a little bulkier down in the, in the girt, <laughs> in the middle of it. Sure, that's what she said. <laughs> if I don't say that's what she said, people will complain, so. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that other expanded projectile is, but we've got little lead, little uh, copper shards here. Oh, there we are. Look at that, right in the Golden Doodle's leg. Oh, okay. So this one, on this one, because of the denser material, the pedals folded back a little bit further. And that's, again, out of the carbine length. Right. So, and, but no breakage on that one, but... No breakage, which is crazy. We did have breakage on this one. I'm ready. Wow. Tiny it's like almost bit. like it, nothing happened there. Yeah. Here we go. Got more energy this is really interesting because the full metal jacket round kind of slipped through the silly putty without really disturbing it or even moving the block very much. On the other hand, the interceptor round did a lot more damage and it threw the block back quite a bit. Went in here, um, Jeff says on the slow motion, this is what we found, by the way, in the back, in the uh, Hong Kong body armor. As it was going through, Jeff says you can actually see the little cuts being made. Is yeah, it yeah. That's this nuts. Right away it opened up. This is its exit wound. Impromptu, but we're going to shoot the German army helmet. All right, jawohl. Here we go on the blue dot. Oh, my goodness. I'd say that made it through and it jugged him That's along. pretty good. Yeah. It pierces army helmets. Oh my goodness. The interceptor round not only pierced the helmet, but actually knocked a piece of the helmet completely loose. If you look closely, you can see the partially expanded bullet flying off in the background. for the blue dot which is no longer there I actually am kind of surprised that lightweight projectile made it through this through the water jug and you said you saw it going out the back yeah it, it kind of flew off Did it go it, through both sides of that or Helmut yeah yeah oh yeah in and out wow for a 90 grain projectile that's pretty dang cool actually. yeah so it's it's not a wimp it's no. lightweight but it's got the penetrating power what are your final thoughts Tim I remain impressed this is uh, some pretty good shit here we don't test a lot of things on here that really, really kind of knock our socks off, especially, and we don't hardly ever test handgun ammo, but uh, that is some impressive stuff. They almost always retain their pedals. That's very unusual. They're faster than they say on the box. That's virtually impossible in the firearms world. <laughs> uh, 1,440 some odd feet per second out of a pistol. Um, and Tim only advertised it at 1,335. Any of those numbers, extremely fast for a nine millimeter round. They had excellent expansion. Would I carry those? Absolutely. I, those, now that I've tested them out, those are some pretty impressive rounds, Tim. So, um, excellent expansion, decent, I mean, actually great penetration through things like the metal helmet into the lead, the lead plate, water jugs, um, and then they, almost all of them retain their pedals. So those are some pretty unusual categories that Tim checked the boxes of. That's some good stuff. And, and he's supposed to be developing in the future 40, 40 caliber, 45 ACP, Ooh, 45? and, and 10 millimeter, 40, 40, 10 millimeter. I'd love to check, uh, yeah, test a 45 and 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter drives things even faster, and 10 millimeter rounds tend to actually collapse and destroy the, the projectiles because it's going too you, fast. You'll probably have to do a little design change of them, I imagine. 
But the 9mm Interceptor is some good stuff, and if you want to test some out, go grab some from Tim. We were impressed. We were actually, every single test we ran today, we were like, wow. Yeah, that yeah. That was nuts. Yeah. That was nuts. It they was just work. Faster, held together longer, penetrated better, and expanded better than we would ever thought. So. Yeah. Good stuff. You guys, uh, we thank you for stopping by and watching this. I'll just throw everything down here on the table. There you go. And uh, hope you guys have a good... Uh, and, and What? You need to subscribe to his channel. How far away from from hitting 100,000? Oh, my channel? Probably by the time you see this video, I might have actually hit 100,000. I'm about 400 uh, subscribers short. Wow, okay. 100,000 viewers. Can you believe people like watching that crap? <laughs> so if you're super bored and you're incarcerated or you're in a full body cast or you're in, in other words, can't change the channel, try OG's Danger Show. There's a couple of laughs and uh, some fun stuff over there. I don't know.